Hello, my name is Jessica Morin, and I'm doing an analysis of base 11102, the depiction of Perseus and the Gorgons. A little bit of background for the vase. It was originated in 550 to 500 BCE in Athens. The shape of the vase is Lakethos, and the technique used for the painting is black figure. There is no artist to attribute it to, they are anonymous at this time, and the vase is currently being held in Paris by the Duke of Leona's collection and is cataloged as number 277. Some background for the myth of the Gorgons and Perseus. When Perseus was a baby, his grandfather put him and his mother in a case and dumped them in the sea, where they eventually made it to an island where the king was taken by his mother and tricked Perseus into trying to attain the head of Medusa. A closer look at the painting, we will start on the left side with the Gorgon's sisters. Here we see their traditional depiction with wings, the serpents on their shoulder, hideous faces with fangs, and their body language, which is in pursuit or running. We see their legs are bent and their arms are also bent. They are going after Perseus to avenge their sister whose head was just cut off. Obviously, she is right next to them on the right. And taking a closer look, this is Medusa, whose head was cut off by Perseus. She is bent, kneeling towards her sisters, with her hands stretched out towards their legs. Her wings are cast downwards, curled up, and blood is gushing out of her neck. For me, this is a very sad depiction. The artist was very detailed in showing her anguish through her body language since she has no face. Next, we'll go on to Athena. In the myth, Athena and Hermes did help Perseus in obtaining the head of Medusa. And so here we see her facing towards the Gorgons, trying to protect Perseus who is running away. In this close-up, we see his leg next to her. Um, we know that this is Athena, mostly because of her iconography, where she always is almost in body armor. We see that with her helmet that she has on, the little things coming out of her back, I can only assume is some sort of chest armor, and also her spear that she has in her hands. Interestingly, this is the myth of which she has another iconographic symbol where she has a shield with Medusa's head on it, painted on it. Um, she had this because fear was usually put into her enemies from the shield, since the myth of Medusa, she can turn men to stone just by looking at them. Next, we have the main character of this myth, Perseus. He takes up actually a lot of space on the vase. He is the largest character, besides maybe the Gorgon sisters. Um, but surrounding him is a lot of white space, so the focus is very intentionally on him and his body language. We see that he is running away from the Gorgons, his body is facing towards the right with his legs bent and so are his arms. Interestingly, he is actually faced towards the Gorgons, whether to, you know, see how far they are pursuing him. You can see with his one eye, it's very large, which to me shows a lot of fear of what's happening. It's a very life and death situation since they want to avenge their fallen sister. On his left arm, we see a bag. In it is Medusa's head. You can see blood dripping from it. He had to put Medusa's head in the bag because they were unsure of whether he, her eyes would still be able to turn men to stone even when dead. And lastly, the last character on this face is Hermes, the other helper of Perseus in obtaining Medusa's head. We know this is Hermes mostly because of the staff he is holding. It is his Caracleon staff which we know because of the symbol on the ends, which is very much like the astrological sign of the Taurus. All in all, his painting is very detailed, and it is interesting how it depicts motion um, versus the stills of the gods and goddesses. Thank you for listening.